can get us up to speed. Climbing up a hole. Do tell. Inquiring minds want to know. Nope, I was just salmon climbing up it, or I think it's what, what Ash called it. Abusing the old rod of an immovable rod. And then everyone ran off without me. <laughs> All right, yeah, that's kind of what I recall. You've got a bunch of baboons kind of sitting there, ooh, ooh and ah, ah, and that's you. Um, as they kind of look down at you, you're still in the hole, but you were, I think we figured you were, what, 25, 27 some odd feet up in the air right now? Uh, not 31 or 32. Yeah, he maxed out at 30 for range of what the hand could do, right? Right. Yes. And then while he was up there, he was playing he was he was trying ways to move it up even higher and managed to actually get a 20 on the uh the the the, the check yes all right what else was going on i found a hallway Other people are eager to check out around corners and doors, looking for other ways. All right. So, yeah, uh, the, the room around you is still, uh, you know, rather dim. Uh, you did uh, discover that the, due to the hole in the ceiling in this particular room, the gas had, uh, has started to dissipate and appears to be kind of going out that direction. So the hallway that Siona is currently peering around the corner, uh, looking far to the west, um, it appears to be clear of the gas. Um, and knowing that she has dark vision, I mean, she can see halfway down. She, you know, it goes further than what her sight can see. She's at the moment unaware of those stairs. At the moment, yes, Siona is unaware of the stairs. I found another hallway. Seems Are we really going to climb out that baboon hole? Because I'm pretty sure there's more baboons up there. Well, so we, we're now clear of the fog, so the, any lingering effects we we're 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 not going to take any any damage at this or reset essentially uh what what do you mean by reset like we came in here we're breathing fresh air now so we're not we're not fighting the <clears throat> No, in this particular room, you were not necessarily fighting against the gas. I mean, it is all—it's been all pervasive up until now. Um, so, uh, you know, as you open that, you know, the door that uh, Siona is going into, she notices that that area is not does not have the gas in it. Uh, so, as you get closer to that door to the southeast uh, corner of the room, the top right-hand corner of the map, um, it's gotten a lot clearer. Okay. Um, yeah, I would basically I, I ask Siona if, that, if that's the case, because if, if it's looking clear that way and we're out of the this fog, maybe we that also leads to an exit. Um, so we may not have to deal with this dangerous uh, attempt to climb out the hole. Corin. I would say up to Corin, if you want to come down and, and go this way. You guys, tell me where the stairs lead, then I'll come down. Well, we don't see the stairs. Tell me where the hallway leads, then I'll come down. Did a lot of work getting up this high. I figured you guys can scout up real fast. If it's clear of gas, it probably means it's a way out, but Earth. better safe than sorry. Okay. Hey, does... Uh... Well, I guess Raz and Siona want to walk down that hall, just kind of see how, how where that leads, and yeah, and scream back if any if there's any issue. 
while we've got uh, Corin hanging on a rod. I'll start moving down the hallway. Okay. So, as you get further down, and I, well, you've got, what, 60 feet? Mm-hmm. Um, So you're getting closer, and you start seeing um, on the wall to the on the right uh, edge of the map, you see that there's a uh, a small plaque on the wall. And the closer you get, you see that the uh, hallway does it bends around, uh, makes a dog leg to the right. Where's the plaque? The plaque is right about here okay I'll stop and take a look at okay so what you look at is this uh, jade plaque um, it's, it's uh, well, more of a bronze plaque inlaid with jade uh, what's depicted on that is a two-headed serpent uh, with its second head where its tail should be So basically the snake we just killed? Or no, it was a two headed snake. It wasn't a two headed no tail snake. Yeah. What did well, we just kill? You just killed a two headed snake. I you know what? I don't actually think we uh, uh talked about where the second head of it was. Um so it was not exactly clear, but one one could say that it looked like it had um ahead where the tail should be so it technically still was a two-headed snake not necessarily an ouroboros but you know you would say this looks very similar to that thing that we just killed in that last room okay i'm gonna walk forward and look around now looking around the corner siona spies a set of stairs that ascend to what appears to be um a staircase leading upward into the gloom. It seems as though you have found the entrance to another layer within this complex. Hey guys, I think I found a set of stairs. You think? Like you found... real, sta- real? No, the real stairs. They Going go up. They go up, right? Did you say they go up? Yes, they go up. Decidedly opposite from down. I mean, that is the wrong direction. I'll use a message to say, can you see daylight or anything? Do I see any light? It's still very gloomy to you. Do you want me to go farther? I start to be get, get concerned about how far apart we end up in case anything we run anything bad happen um rise is gonna go down there with her since he can mage hand do other dexterous stuff i'm gonna start going up the stairs they're, they're okay. probably out of message at this point right it's 120 One feet. Second. Let's see. That's probably about the limit right there. Huh? So Raz is going to stay at the message. Okay. So Raz is staying at the uh, in message, and Siona is going up the stairs a little bit.
And are the baboons up above still just kind of hooting and hollering up there? Yes, they are very much hooting and hollering. They are, they are getting uh, upset. Um, all right, thank you very much. Um, yes, they are. You you can see that they are they are still, you know, they are starting to pile it on and point and looks like they're trying to organize. You know, as much as a group of baboons can can organize. Um, thank you for that, uh, Siona. All right, so baboon, baboons are starting to get anxious. What are we? What are we doing? Well, uh, uh, Corn, I don't think that's going to be the way to go. If, if there's a way up that Siona's going. All right. Well, if. I can try and come down if you think that's going to be the way out. Just watch for fallen monkeys. Well, I'm, I'm I'm looking up at them with uh, with, with my my staff in snake form. So I haven't returned them yet. I don't think. Yeah, I mean it's. Uh... You know, as they look at the snake, you know, clearly they are, you know, they're keeping a wary eye on the staff of the adder. Thongram, what you doing there, buddy? I am trying to get the map to work, but I will follow the herd. All right, I'll slide down and retract my rope and all the, in this rod. And follow everybody. Okay. As you slide down, you st uh, you know the the baboons start kind of flinging some some stuff at you, but you're sliding out of the range as these rocks and pebbles kind of you know click past you. Uh, you know they're they're still hooting and hollering as you start to move, but you you manage to def deftly escape that their their pelting. Well, I may hand the rod down, pack, grab, and start coiling the rope up as I run. All right. Okay. So, Siona, you... Uh... Close the door. Oh, did you close the door? This door? Yeah. Yeah? On the way. Yeah. Okay. Not a, not a bad plan. Okay, so y'all y'all are in the darkness, and uh, so Corin's uh, kind of being, you know, I'm gonna imagine he's kind of rolling down, following the sound of y'all's voice and such. I don't know if he's still got the dancing lights up or not. I do. I assume assume I do if we're not in combat. Okay, yeah. So you've got that, and you're you're down the hallway there. So Thongram is looking up the stairs towards Siona, who is uh, you know kind of peering up into the into the darkness. So Siona, uh, assuming that you are currently the leader of this pack, what do you do? I perceptively walk up the stairs. Perceptively, I like it. Uh, go ahead and roll me a perception check, please. Very good. Okay, so I'm assuming everybody's going up the stairs. So, I mean, just ask one question. The top of the stairs, there's a door that we that isn't currently open, right? Do we even see that far? Uh, I thought that. I thought we said that. Sorry. No, we didn't say. That. She's looking up into the into the gloom. At this point, she would see. Uh, or she, uh, let me be more accurate. She would not see a door because she's got that sixty feet of uh, of uh, dark vision. So that puts her seeing to roughly there, right? Um, Y'all can see that, yes? No. Yes. Okay. So if she can see up to there, she would see at the top of the stairs, or she would not see that there's a doorway uh, towards the top of it. Uh, she sees that the stairs do come to an end, and there appears to be a small landing at the top of those stairs. I don't know about anyone else, given that we no longer are breathing poison. 
if anyone wants to consider taking any type of rest. Like a short rest or a long rest? We have been in, how, how long have we been in here? You guys have been in this dungeon roughly 12, 12 or 13 hours. You've been in here uh, the better portion of a day, but it has not been longer than a day. We've taken two or three short rests. You've taken just two. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it is two or three. So you've taken a, you know two or three short rests. You have not taken a long rest. Now this long rest, you know, that's, you know, obviously we're in a dangerous situation, so things, you know, could, could, you know, happen, but we'll find out. That room we just came out of would be hard to defense, even with alarm and such, considering an open hole with a bunch of baboons above. Um, but yeah, I'd like to find a defensible area before we actually decide to take a long rest. Um, Although I think this hallway is starting to look nice because it doesn't have the ni that, that nice poison that we've been dealing with. And two closed doors. Yeah, yeah. so those doors up there, do you remember, because I can't remember which way we uh, said that they opened, did you open them into the room or into the hallway? I don't think we've been asked. Mm, I don't know. I think I just said I opened the door. Yeah. All right. So let's do this, uh, Siona, since you were the one who opened it. Roll me a D4, and we will say evens were in, into the hallway, and odds were out into the baboon room. Evens. So it, roll, it opened in towards the hallway, if that helps you plan. So I can I can rob that door, but something's pissing those baboons off. Eh. What if it decides to come down the wall? Wasn't that the snake? And you? They seemed off just before we even got in there. <clears throat> and how would that snake have pissed them off if they almost died jumping down there to kill us? Now, if you remember, they didn't decide to come down into this until after the big, uh, the big uh, uh, snake perished. That's when they started to be brave enough to start entering into the into the tomb. Right. So why were they? I'm asking why. Why do we think they're hanging out there to begin with? Because there's an opening in the middle of their whatever area. There's a hole in the ground essentially to them, right? And now you guys did see some bodies uh, of baboons in in the rubble uh, that looked at, like it had been chewed up by the snake. I just figured it was picking them off as they fell in and they were pissed off about it, so. Sounds like a good reason to me. We can... Or it's their sacrifice pit. I don't know. We can jam the we can jam the doors closed, and then I guess take turns watching down the hallway. It should be enough to rest comfortably, I would think, for however long we needed to do it. Okay. Yeah. So just the other. You have to build, put an alarm on each end of the hallway, and we, then you know, jam the door, put an alarm around it, jam, and then put an alarm at the other end of the hallway. And we could use the hallway as a as a camp, and and get our our long rest in to to restore all of our uh, resources before we go up those stairs. If that's the call. And seeing as it has been like 12 or 50 sessions since we've done a long rest, that's it's eight hours, right? Right. 
Well, I mean, we can try it. It's This hallway will make some narrow fighting if something goes down, but it should affect whoever attacks us as well. Right. I think the real danger would only be if we got flanked, but... Um... I mean, if we decide to do it, we just let's let's do it and set a watch order. And... All right. Well, I will go back up and the movable rod. The door is closed. Okay. Okay. Probably a good idea. Um, I'll get to. What's my area? 20 by 20? Yes. Um, so everybody put your stuff where you're going to be. Okay. 20. I think that's it. Something like that. And then something like that. So your alarm, is that concentration or that's just a thing? It's just, a, yeah, it's a ritual that gives me a thing that then I'll make this one audible to everybody. Um, that basically would, would send, you know, be an audible alarm that everyone would hear. And, they don't, they don't, of course, we wouldn't trip it. Um, I wouldn't make it go past the door. I only wanted it if the door actually gets opened, right? Because if the monkeys start moving around behind the door, I don't care. Or right. Yeah. Uh, and then essentially, we you know we get a warning, and whoever's on watch should be set. So. Okay, so we've got the alarm set up. The immovable rod has been uh, jammed into the uh, uh, blocking blocking the door there. And how much force does that take? Was it mm, how much weight could it do? Three hundred ton or two tons? Two tons. Okay, yeah, signif significant amount. Okay, got it. Yeah. All right. You so have, you probably have to break the doors around it before it would move. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. 8,000 pounds. All right. Four, ton, fun, four tons. Got it. So uh, if, if a golden dragon comes on through, just y'all just roll with it. It's a DC 30 switch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, we're going to set a watch order. Who's going who's gonna to do first through fourth? I'll take first. I'll take last. I'll take Second. And Raz will take third. Oh, okay. All right. So, Eldon, you are the lucky one who gets to rest the entire eight hours. Um, so, everybody roll me perception checks, please. Thongram, roll me 1d4, please. And Corin, roll me a 1d10. Okay, so um, as y'all are going through the first watch, um, Corin, um, you know, he's uh, keeping an eye out uh, down this hallway. Um, it's noticeably, you know, it's relatively quiet within this hallway. Uh, outside in the, the big baboon chamber, you do hear um, several baboons uh, have made their way down into the pit uh, and are, are snuffling around. And, if, you know, you can hear there's, there's something happening, uh, but none of them appear to have uh, come towards the door. Um, uh, moving forward into uh, 
I was, one second. Into Thongram's watch. Now, Elden, that alarm, it's 20 foot wide. Is it a cube? It is a 20 foot cube. No larger than. No larger. No larger than a 20 foot cube. Got it. Uh, so, uh, go ahead. Well, um, I guess no. Let's let's resolve the night um, before before I ask my question. Sorry. All right. So, as Thongram's watch comes through, um, you go through, and uh, Thongram is you know tumbling around. Looks like he's peering up the uh, the wall. So I look. Peering up the stairways, he, you know, keeping guard over this. Um, but what he doesn't happen to see is that along the ceiling, a giant wolf spider has made its way around the, from the stairs, around the hallway, and is looking right on top of Siona. And it leaps down on top of her from the ceiling, uh, which are 30-foot ceilings. And this wolf spider attempts to uh, bite uh, Siona as she rests there in the hallway. which I'm assuming would be at advantage if she's asleep would be a 14, but it doesn't matter. So, Siona would wake up having this spider on top of her. What would she do? Uh, scream and throw it. Screaming and <laughs> throwing it. Okay. Uh, roll me a strength check. Or the athletics check, please. And we're going to say that we're in a brief initiative uh, while we're at this. Well, nope. Yeah. <laughs> no. How many athletics checks you got to roll? <laughs> I didn't do that one. <laughs> I'm not really sure how that one rolled because I didn't have my hand on the mouse. Uh, all right, one, two, three, four. Corn got two of them out there. So, Siona, you were unsuccessful in attempting to throw this spider off of you, so it is currently still all up in your grill, uh, you know, with its eight legs, kind of, and it's just kind of trying to slather its saliva all over you as its pinchers are right in your face. It is your turn. Okay. I'm going to stand up. And so it's on me, so I couldn't really like hit it. Right? No, it's yeah. I mean, it kind of landed on top of you. If you so, if you stood up, it's probably still like right there. I mean, I suppose. I guess I'll try to break. Is it considered a grapple? I guess I'll just try to throw it off again. Yeah. I'm not stabbing myself with my axe, which is what Will's trying to get me to do. <laughs> Well, it's trying to bite your armor because, of course, it can't hit. It didn't hit you, so that is correct. It didn't do anything that first time. Smash it between the axe and the. Should I try to punch it? 
Are you asking me? You can do whatever you want to do. I'm going to use my channel divinity. Okay. And make it scared of me. <laughs> okay. A wisdom saving throw. The spider is unafeared. Unafeared. I shouldn't have listened to Will is what I'm thinking now. Um, Who is this Will in your brain? I know, right? Whoever it is, you may not want to listen to him. <laughs> yeah, I, that's what I'm deciding. Um, <laughs> I don't really have anything else. That that would be my action. Okay. Not going to move. Not going to do hang anything. On, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Is this really where we all were? Um, I really wasn't looking at the map, to be honest. <laughs> looking at the map, going, I don't think this is where we all were. But okay. I did give you the opportunity. <laughs> okay. So... I'm going to Misty Step. Okay. Does it go with me? No, I don't think you would end up coming into like a silvery mist and kind of disappearing and going, you know, you would teleport up to 30 feet. So I don't yes, think that it does break grapples. Yeah, I don't think that it also doesn't okay, do enough. Well, I'm teleporting. I'm teleporting to right here in front of Throngrim, preferably with the spider in between us. If it's coming with me, I don't think. And it I'm going to yell at him to get this thing off of. You don't think it would come with me? I don't think it comes with you. It would say so in the spell if it did. Okay, the good. Yeah. I'm free, and I'm next to Throngrim. Yes. Uh, now I'm going to move over here. All right. I tell them there's a spider. Now, one more thing about Misty Step. It does not do, and I, the way I read it, and I, I mean, it seems fairly straightforward, but it does not uh, give you an, uh, uh, an opportunity attack against you. You just kind of poof and teleport. No, I just teleport. Right. Okay. So, you have moved. It is now the spider's turn. Thongram, you are on deck. Hmm. This is Thongrim's um, watch. Yes, Thongrim did not. It is his watch, and he uh, did not uh, did not see this thing. So the spider is going to. But he would have heard me scream. Yes, he would have heard you scream. Yes, and so I'm assuming everybody else would have woken up at this scream. But regardless, I'm just still sort of surprised that the ceiling is more than twenty feet tall. Uh, there, the the ceilings in this temple have ranged between twenty and forty feet tall. Must um, not have been able to see that when I was casting uh, all these alarms that I was setting up. And ah, uh, well, Seslavai. So the, the spider moves down into the alarm, which at this point, based on, um, based on the way that you set up the alarm, everybody would be aware of what's happening at this point. You would have heard something. So this spider comes down, and it scribbles down through the floor uh, right up to Thongrim and attempts to bite him. Which is a miss. Fongram, you are up. Raziel is on deck. So this is just like a normal spider. Uh, you would look at it and you go, "Well, this is—it's not a—it's—it's it's pretty large for a spider." 
Um, like bigger than a tarantula? Yes, I would say. Smaller than a chihuahua? Um, well, we will say that it is a medium beast, so it is a it is a giant. Well, you know what? You guys have seen, you have run across these things before, so it looks... Uh, you know, I don't want to metagame it so much, but I mean, it's, you would look at the, the spiders from the, the Hobbit cartoon, you know, how large those spiders are. It's bigger than a Hobbit. Bigger than a Hobbit. So bigger than okay. a Hobbit. So I'm not going to stomp on it, basically. Nah, I don't think you, I mean, you could try, but. So bigger than a gnome, but smaller than a dwarf. Yeah, I'll go with that. All right, both of those are hits. And that is more than enough to subdue the uh, giant spider. Um, anything you would like to do to said spider? Nope, I will... Uh sheepishly look towards Siona. Uh, sorry about that. got a little distracted there. <laughs> Pleasant dreams. Were you daydreaming? Night dreaming? Night drinking? For for what it's worth, the, the spider rolled a, 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 a much higher stealth check than your perception. Not that Thongram would know that, but... Oh, well, 30 feet overhead, it's uh, looking up. All right, so you had one lone spider make its way into your encampment, uh, which you guys quickly dispatched. Um, so uh, I'm assuming everybody is going back to resting? As soon as Eldon casts a few more alarms. I'm also kicking that spider away from me, and I'm going to sleep in this corner now. <laughs> All right. Oh, sleeping inside an alarm space. Hmm. Right? Bad idea. Sneaky, sneaky. Okay, so the uh, turn order keeps on going into the third watch. Raziel uh, <coughs> continues to hear the the <laughs> from the inside the the, the baboon chamber, um, and it's peering up into the you know he, he you know he's kind of walking up and down the hallway, uh, doesn't and doesn't see anything uh, going through there. Uh, Siona, your watch comes up and. Um, much, much to your 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 happiness, nothing really happens. So you guys have made it through your watch, uh, through your rest. Uh, it's been eight hours, so go ahead and uh, make make your stuff rested. Okay, so that's where my question. Go for it. Okay, um, so a while during this the course of this. Um, we got the sense that we were cursed. Yes, I believe it was Elden and Siona that ended up having a curse put upon them. Beyond Siona's, what we don't know. Correct. Okay. Um. And you, would this curse be something identifiable by just meditating on it or such? To know what we're I, You know what? Let me go back and reread it. I don't think so, but I'll check. Uh, now, remember, during this long rest, you could take the opportunity to attune to other items, uh, other, uh, other charms if you needed to refill on that. Uh, make sure that your uh, spells, uh, spell slots have been recovered. Um, your health, blah, blah, blah. And I'll go check on that curse again. Would this rest have taken us through dawn? Oh, yeah, because we've got also got uh, wands and such that we've been using. I'm right. thinking about it. So this okay. would have been eight hours. Um, 
I mean, if we were down here 12 hours and just waited eight more, I assume that's yeah, I, be... yeah, I, I, let's just assume that you were past dawn at this point because I can't remember exactly when you guys fell in. Uh, but I, I would think at this point that you would have you would have gone past dawn. I'm, I'm guessing we wouldn't have been hiking it. Well, would have had to have been the what like eight eight p.m. We would have rested by then. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it was either in the evening or you guys would have fallen in like mid to late afternoon. Uh, I, either, either way, you're, you're, you're going to be past it. Right, was there anything left to identify? There were, I think there's like a potion or something. Or a... There were a couple of potions. Small container with flower-shaped plugs containing dried remains of potion. And a six-inch long statue of a face of a man with large pointed ears plugged at the bottom. It is a bottle that contains some form of potion. Um, I think we got the carved jade rings done. Both of the rings have been identified. Okay. Um, we got the mask. I don't see anything else. Anybody else is looking at the list at the moment? I mean, I think I think that was it. So um, the, I saw that plus one dagger we found, and I think I remember the rings being weird and like animal friendship or something. One was animal friendship, and the other was a ring of protection against fire. Which would, and both require attunement. Correct. So, yeah, I, anybody who wants it. Oh, uh, I, I'll take the, if no one wants to fire one, I can take it. I can't attune anymore, so I can't, I wouldn't be able to. Checking my attunements now. Because the one thing we have the, for attunements, we have the, charm bracelet that we're attuned to. I have a wand of web and I have the staff of adder, so that's my three. I think I just had the charm bracelet. Okay. Did we ever identify that magical pipe that's not a fish? Oh, that's right. No one touched that because we had no need, no one on the group that needed it. That's true. Yes, the pike, not a fish, was also something. Okay, I that... can't find the. I can't find the wand thing. Don't you roll a roll something to recharge a wand? A web. I don't see in the description that I have the recharge. Restores one d six plus one at dawn. Oh, okay. That is good roll. I've only used two. Yes, so. uh, Siona, oh, cool. do not forget about your axe, too. Yep. Eldon, you asked the question about the uh, the curse. Uh, no, you would not. Uh, no, you just you, you got the feeling that something something hinky is going on, but you wouldn't know what it is. But I would recognize I as a magical curse. Yes. And I would know that it's on myself only. I wouldn't know about others. But Siona, uh, I'm a, you should know that I've been acting. Well, odd. There, yeah, well, there is that too. But this is separate. You guys tripped a ward back on in the tomb of Tlokes Papalokas, and the two of you guys failed a save, uh, and were cursed again. Oh, that's right. So I guess I'm going to ask this. So I wouldn't necessarily know that anybody else is cursed the way I feel cursed, right? So, but I would know I'm cursed. Yes. Okay. Um, so I'm going to, in my preparations, you know, prepare, remove curse as one of my spells. 
And I'm going to ask this, did anybody else feel like they had something, this weird, what this odd feeling of being, I don't know how I feel on this. Do I feel, I just feel like I have an odd like aura now or? Well, I thought he said that we felt it and there, like something happened in the room when it happened, but right. Does anybody? But anybody's feeling. I mean, that essentially, I'm. I had that feeling. Has I guess what I'm trying to say. Has this feeling and would be able to let me know that they're having this feeling because I'm going to um, remove this curse on myself. And ask if anybody else is feeling this. I don't feel anything. And Raz probably would give the same answer. I don't remember this answer for him. Which, I mean, I, yeah, because the only, because I could, like, as we've been told, it's only two of us. So, but. But Siona, you're feeling this as well? I don't know how to answer. Uh, I think you would have known that you, you had that. Uh, I think you would have known that at the time. I think I told you at the time that you, you were. Okay. Um, so... Um, one one second. While you're doing that, is the the two rings that the jade and alabaster rings? I don't see anything in that page about a ring of fire resistance and a ring of animal influence. Oh, I don't think we typed it in. Okay, so that that's what that's what they are though. Yeah, I think the. I see the let jade. me let me check. The Panther one just has a reference of page 189 in the DM. Oh. And I think I typed in the Ring of Fire Resistance right after the last time I, uh, uh, because I, I did that one. Okay, well, the Ring of Animal Influence does not require attunement. So if somebody who's better with animals should be the person who wears it. Okay. And since I'm wearing the fire one, there's, there's no reason to put it in the book. In the hey, Lindsay, join me over into the DM channel. Okay. It'd just be easier to talk about this. Yeah. Um, I... Since it is cursed, it would break the attunement. The curse itself would not be broken on the axe. So I don't really know which way you, you would you would feel about it. Um, I'm happy to go either way. If he breaks it, you could say, I just want to reattune to it. Because if you like if you like the ability to be able to do the extra damage and the spells and you want to run the risk of going berserk on people, which we just barely missed out on this time, mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm good either way. Um, but I, I mean, I figured I would let you play that out how, however you chose. I think the axe is kind of cool and I think it might get us uh, kind of a crazy thing later. Um, but that's, you know, that's just me looking for, for drama. Um, but if he does cast that, since the way the remove curse spell reads, all curses affecting you would end. Okay. Um, so at that point, if you wanted to reattune to it, then that's... You know, more power to you. I guess I was just making sure the axe doesn't affect me any in any way that would make me not want to be decursed. You know what I mean? But the more I read it, it looks like it doesn't have that effect. No, it's just now that you have attuned to it, you know, you kind of, you know, it's still like I don't want to part from this thing. Mm -hmm. You know, so once that's gone, you know, that's fine. But I don't know if you, I mean. I guess my question is, is could you still use the axe? You just wouldn't be able to use any of the, the stuff to it, so all of the magical abilities, or you just may not even be able to use the axe. I don't I don't know. 
I'd rather still be attuned to it. So I'll probably okay. just reattune. Okay. I, I, honestly, that makes me happy to hear because I, I still want <laughs> I, I still want to see how people react to it. Does Does Will know what happens to it? Well, I mean, I accidentally posted it. I'm sure they all read it. Okay. Well, we'll see. <laughs> well, Tongram didn't. We know we know that Ash doesn't really know. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Sounds good. All right. Yes, I also had that weird feeling. If you could do whatever you're doing. Oh, okay. Well, then, um, yeah. Even though this is may use these spell slots early, I'd rather not wander around cursed. So yes, I'll I'll also remove hit. I'll do remove curse on Siona. Okay. Um, So that would remove anything affecting her. Um, it wouldn't. I haven't done anything against the magic, but if there's something, all curses affecting her are removed. Correct. Including any, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, there we go. So Siona? Which is, because she attuned to that, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. And, um, all right, so Siona, um, do you want to, uh, are there any charms or anything you want to attune to, or you're, you're good? Okay, so the last on the last short rest, Thongram attuned to his bracers of defense. Um, is there anything else that he wanted to do? And the and the rest? No, I'm okay. I don't think I got anything unless y'all are got some kind of a rotating identifying system or something. Otherwise, no. Uh, the the one other thing that you guys talked about was the pike. Um, so the you you would have identified this pike as a pike of triumph, something that you've read about in the uh, in the books. Um, Eldon and um, at least you know Raz would have heard this. It's a heavy weapon that requires um, uh, two hands to use, um, and it's got a one d ten attack. Uh, but if you attune to it, uh, you you learn that. Uh, if you land the killing blow on a creature, you would regain 2d8 hit points um, on on that attack. Quinn is back? Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if you uh, if you attune to that um, thing and you, you use that, if you land the killing blow on a creature, you would gain 2d8 hit points. no limit of how many times that happens not according to the thing that was written so you're right that does sound like that could be game breaking if there's like say a whole bunch of really tiny wolf spiders and you kill it uh, or you find a ring of manifest ants and <laughs> you stop on 10 ants and regain full hit points every time well yes but you'd have to kill them with the pike <laughs> Size doesn't. Uh, well, you said stomp in this game. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. You, you could, well, you could just use the the heel. The heel the, of the thing. Stomp, 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 stomp. Yes, you are absolutely correct. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, if it becomes game breaking, we could say, hey, this ha this happens, you know, on you know the first time, and it recharges at the beginning of the at the end of a short rest or something. I, you know, I don't. Or, or you do or you do something like they, they can't restore more hit points than the creature ha the, than the creature you killed had. I think the usual thing is like it's you can choose to regain two DH hit points. Once you use this ability, it cannot be used again until you've taken a shorter long rest. Yeah, I, I you know the way that it was the, the way that that was written, I was like, okay, well that seems awfully open ended. Um, but it would be game breaking, I think, in my opinion, for that very reason. Um, what do you think? 
I mean, I, I, I like the idea of, you know, it comes back after a short or long rest. I mean, either way, it seems pretty, pretty handy. Well, I was thinking that either way or once per encounter, you know, either. Way. I don't think you should be able to, even if you're just fighting regular ones, you could get two or three kills in a, in an encounter, especially once you've got four or five attacks and you're just you you never, popping yeah. HP the whole time. Yeah. So let's do it on a shorter, long rest. I, I, I think that would probably balance it out a little, a little more. Okay. So any takers on that one or? Because I know that uh, there's also that vicious uh, battle axe that uh, Thongram has that he got from the captain. Well, I think Thongram's the only person who can use that pike. I mean, he could attune to it and not necessarily use it. I mean, I don't. I mean, he's got the charm bracelet currently attuned. He's got the bracers. I don't think he's got anything else attuned. But I haven't looked, so I don't know. I got a what bracelet? The charm the bracelet. Charm bracelet. We all kind of have them, so we. And you guys have several charms uh, left over. Left over in the in the bag of holding. Oh, we do. Yeah, you guys have, uh, there's seven of them out there. A Sweet Clover, Silent Claw, Dragon Skin Shell, Lucky Gold, Cat Lord, Song of the Ancients, and a Sweet Rainbow. Oh, I'll look at them later. Uh, it's not a thing. I'm not concerned with them at the moment. Okay. So everybody's health is good to go. Uh, so, okay, I got the Ring of Fire, which is on. Does anyone want to just go ahead and use the Ring of Animal? But if it's not a tune, it does not require attunement. I'll wear it if no one wants, if no one else does. Okay. Did you say you took it? I, I couldn't quite hear you. Yeah, Eldon said yeah, he would wear it. Wear it. Eldon, Eldon will wear it if no one else wants it. I mean, I'm still thinking about that cat forest, but if you want it, you can have it. Oh, go ahead. I mean, Somebody you... remembers the cat forest! If someone has an interest in it, then, then by all means. Yeah, I'll put it on. That means the cat forest is coming back. <laughs> All right. Um, so that said, we're going to conclude the long rest. Um, hit dice are all restored. And are we going to... Hit dice are half restored. Half restored. Yes, half restored. And that does matter in this one because you guys used the hell out of them. Half rounded up, down. Down. Every, everything rounds down unless otherwise specified. Unfortunately. Boy. But at least we don't take damage at the end of this rest, so. Uh, I'm good. All right, one second. I've just put a new thing in my features and traits called attunement. I'm going to send track it there. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. So you guys have gone up the stairs, and you see that there's a little landing there. Um, I have put you all in an order on the stairs there that I kind of assumed you would be in. Um, feel free to change that if you wish in that general area. Change. 
So Which at the be at the beginning of the uh, the party, I've got Siona and Thongram leading up there. Eldon's in the middle with Raz and Corin at the back uh, on the stairways as y'all were coming up. If y'all want to rearrange in that little area, feel free. I'm good. I definitely would not be in the front. Okay. So you guys have made it up to the stairs, and it looks like we may be on a map that actually, you know, lines up properly for once. Well, the other one lined up on the right side, too. <laughs> yes. So and For the record, I did I did grab the rod before we left. Oh, I heard you. I, 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 I didn't say it. I assumed, that, I assumed that you would have gotten it. Um. Uh, otherwise, I would have probably asked. Okay, so you guys have started to make your way up here. You guys feel refreshed, don't you? It's been a long day. Level six? No. Oh. Not refreshed? Not, not that refreshed. So... Uh, Siona, I'm going to tag you as the uh, group leader still, uh, since you were leading the charge up these steps. What do you want to do? Well, maybe I'm thinking more clearly, because we've had a night's rest and I can breathe, finally. Yeah? So I would get somebody else to scout. Fine, I'll do it. <laughs> I just want y'all to know I hate you because this is not outside, and I was almost outside. Okay, so, uh, Corin. We can always go back. Seeing that you have walked up the stairs, as you get to the top of the stairs there, uh, you, all of a sudden, in front of you, the walls burst open, and this large stone dragon pops forward in front of you. This stone dragon pops out of this wall, moving forward, and unleashes a giant gust of steam, 30 feet long and 10 feet wide. So everybody needs to roll me a constitution saving throw. Uh, at a DC 15. So far. Okay, so uh Siona and <laughs> Yes, the gates of the Great Stone Dragon. So uh Siona and Thonger managed to only take half damage uh So Everybody will take eight, except Siona and Thongram, who will take four. And now this would be considered fire damage, so Corrin, I believe you would also take half damage due to your newly attuned ring of fire resistance. Woo! A magic item that works out for you, Fronts. Thank you guys so much. So... Corin would have noticed as you know as he was taking that last step that something happened and that was likely the cause of this dragon shooting out into this wall now now that this has happened all of the stairs are now covered in this condensed steam uh, making the stairs slippery difficult terrain so any character moving on these stairs at this point will have to su succeed on a DC-10 acrobatics check or fall prone. So, 
So there is condensation all over this due to the superheated bolt of steam that this dragon just bolted out at you guys. Now, so it's like a statue, not a... Or is this a... It's not alive, it's just a statue. No, it's, it's, a, it's, yeah, it's a giant stone dragon. So, uh, Corin, being as close to it as you would, you, you, you know, you hear it's like the percolation of a, of a coffee maker. It's, you know, you hear that steam is still gurgling and brewing inside of it. Was that whole wall gone? It has kind of moved to the side. So we could all run up next to it if we wanted to. Uh, yes. Everything right. Like that wall's not there at all, as far as we're concerned. As far as you're concerned right now, yeah, it's it's fear game. All right, well, guys, this thing's about the about the fire again, so you might want to get out of the way. All right, so I'm going to while you're doing that. Now, everybody that's moving, uh, if you're moving on the stairs, I need a uh, an acrobatics check. Hmm. Do we see, is there, okay, there we go. I was working on it. It seems that we have stumped Thongram. No, I was just trying to see. So this is just some sort of trap. It's not a real dragon. Correct. And nobody from where they are sees any type of disabling mechanism. No. All right, I will attempt to go out of the way too. Oh yeah, what was the? I guess we're assuming that it just shot straight forward down the stairs. That this going to this side is out of the. Yes, it would be ten. It's ten foot wide, so it would it would just get those two square those squares all the way down. So if you were right okay. here. So as Thongram made his way up there, the the dragon unleashes yet another bolt down here. But you guys have made your made it out of the way. It seems like that took about ten seconds. Not hot enough to roast marshmallows. Well, I mean, it is steam, so it'd be you'd be more like poaching the marshmallows, which doesn't sound nearly as appetizing. Ooh. Maybe eggs. Then. Yes. Thongram, get to right. hatching some eggs. So we can, all, we can all see that there's a space to the right beyond the dragon. Yes. When we were going up there. Did, did, but it's just an alcove with no... Yes, I mean you would notice. I mean, if you want, if you walked up there, and let's just assume that you did, it, it is a small alcove that appears to have some mechanics that would. Uh, um, hang on, I'll I'll tell you a little bit more about it. So, I mean, you get back there, um, and it's you see that there's a hot water geyser uh, in the bedrock behind it that appears to be replenishing this trap with the, uh, the the hot water that's needed. So, and the mechanics required to you know, push the thing forward and, and, and back on, on a, what appears to be some sort of either magical, um, premise, the, the dreaded hand wavium. And as another 10 seconds elapse in this, the dragon erupts with yet another gust of steam down into that into that passageway and it's getting a little moist uh, there you guys are you know feeling that you know not that you're getting injured but it is it is decidedly humid in this little area well maybe that'll keep wolf spiders from following behind so got it. or anything yeah. else that might be following us from behind yeah so I guess we should be careful as we move forward uh, not to trip anything, because we we aware that there was something that tripped that and started that. 
uh, we somebody rolled a saving throw earlier in the session. And failed it. Me. Not naming names, Siona, but Siona may have failed Me. a saving throw. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we'll move we're gonna start moving along and down. Perceptively. Always. So the hallway goes towards the north and uh, into a T intersection. Continuing along. Okay. So you get to this corridor, and at the western end of the corridor is a, a pile of golden coins heaped on the floor. Um, you know, uh, uh, to the east, uh, you see a pair of double doors, uh, apparently leading into a larger chamber. And judging by our direction, that would be towards the moon. North is still to the left. Yes, that's good. So then, judging this would be towards the room above the baboon room. The room was it was outside. What? There was light coming down from it. Either there's light inside this place, or I, I mean, I assume I saw sky and stuff. Yeah, I think we all we all did, right? So, like, thinking position wise, we we just looped back around, we went upstairs, looped back around, and we would be going over the top of the baboon room, which would be towards that entrance, right? The hole was over oh. here. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is it would be that would be towards the hole we saw. Right. How far up did these stairs go? Were the, are we still below the top of the hole? E Honestly, I don't know how to answer that question, um, because um, I'll just I'll just peel back and metagame a little bit for you. This map does not necessarily take into account the logic that you are applying, which makes perfect sense to me, and you are correct, based on how everything is lining up. Um, so let's say... Um, that, you know, physics and you have... You have warped around and something just, you know, you are you are still in the temple on a higher land, a higher part of the temple. Ex ignoring the fact that logically it does not make sense. All right, well. Sorry, I don't, I, 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 I could try to come up with an end game expl explanation, but it's just, it's not clicking in my brain. Sorry. Okay, and then... From this intersection, we can see. Oh yeah, broken so. egg. Um, it appears from this distance. It is a uh, pile of golden coins. If you care to go take a closer look, you are more than welcome to do so. That sounds like a trap. Let's not go that way. Right. What do you think? Oh, I think that I like coins. I mean, it's not like there's been a lot of coins and traps around lately. But 
you're probably right that we shouldn't take the coins, but maybe that's what they want you to think, and we should take the coins. I am not going down that hallway, Thongrim. You are more than welcome to, but I am not. Same for you, Siona. I mean... It, is this I that Will never. person? <laughs> Ever try to steal some coins. You know. So well then, you think we just go back down and try and get up that hole? There's, there's only four of us now. I don't know about that, but I'm going back past that dragon. Um... I'm thinking those doors to the right seem like the way we might need to go, but we don't have like uh, Siona isn't thinking in terms of like she doesn't have like, anything guiding her at the moment. Does she? No. Mm -mm. So we're just trying to find a way out. So I I would think that the way to the Thongram, roll me a perception check. Thongram. Okay. Very careful. So, uh, Thongram, uh, you notice on top of this gold that, that a, a, a skull is resting on top of the pile, uh, missing its lower jaw. In the right eye socket, a, a black spider has made, it, made its home. And this would be a small black spider, not the one that you like, one that you just saw here. Um, several bones are piled up with the coins, and the hilt of a broken sword thrusts up from the mass. You also happen to uh, spy almost directly under your feet as you're looking around um, that there appears to be a cobblestone that is slightly raised from the floor. Um, you're looking around and you're like this, you know, and obviously with your stone cunning you're like this stone does not seem to belong here. You let me see here. Yes. So there you go. You manage to pull on the stone a little bit, but it doesn't seem to give too much. You feel like it is still attached. There's like something to it. Um, you know. But pulling at it just man manages to lift it just, you know, just a few centimeters higher out of the ground. Uh, hey, Siona, uh, oh, take a look at this. There's a stone here that's all weird. And my gut feeling is saying I should push it. But there's also... A skeleton in the gold. So it's very possible the gold eats people. That sounds logical. It could also be a good luck skull. Guys, I think the gas got Siona. <laughs> I want to hear more about this good luck skull. So you said that it's like right under me, like basically yeah, in the middle of the next square. I'd no, I'd say like you're you're almost like right on top of it. It's like right in this area. So like if you weren't if you weren't paying attention as as Thongram is want to do, you could probably stomp directly on it. I mean, it's probably a trigger for something. If we're gonna be serious. So we probably should not step on it. I backed up one square and poked it with a stick. <laughs> well, okay then. You know, we've got guys with mage hand. 
Yeah, guys who weren't going down the hallway towards the obvious trap. So as he pokes the stone with this javelin, directly to the west of Siona, these two doors, um, they pivot inwards, revealing revealing a hidden passageway. Uh. And in case you didn't hear it the first time. Zelda. Did hey, look what we found. Good job, yeah. Thongram. Corin, did you roll me a perception oh. check earlier? Go ahead. No, I was waiting for you guys, you to call it. Okay, all right, that's fine. Okay, go ahead. You guys figure out what y'all are doing. I ain't found shit. That was, that was mine, but I just said the wrong thing. But it's 12 since Elden was just eight. Elden was touching you. He was, he was assisting me, so I got an advantage. Okay, so we'll we'll deal with that. Uh, you know, you were checking that out. So y'all were, y'all were talking. You know, like Siona said something. So it turns out the button didn't kill us yet. It's a good thing. So, Siono, well, what you what are you gonna do? Are you gonna listen to this Will character? Are you gonna listen to that Thonger? Was, that was Corin saying that. Okay, okay. Are you gonna listen to Corin? Are you going to strike out and be your own woman and do do what you do? I'm going to listen at the hallway. Okay. Roll me a perception check. Can I do aid and guidance at the same time? Yeah, because you can guide and then last for a minute. Okay. You hear a hallway. There doesn't appear to be anything in it. Um, you know, the, you, you talk into it. There doesn't be, there's no rustling. You don't see any haze or whatever. Seems to be your perfectly run-of-the-mill secret passage. I'm going to wait and see if they open the doors at the thong or the uh, corn and Holden are hanging out at to see what our next move should be. Okay, listening to the door up top, both um, Corin and Elden, uh, they they don't necessarily hear. Um, hear um, much uh, closer to them they would uh, hear what's you know what they would think this sounds like uh, some the sound of sand being uh, pushed around uh, maybe some wind um, but you don't they don't necessarily hear any creatures per se wind like Outdoor air moving around. Um, let me read this again because I may be describing it poorly. Were we near any beaches when we mm. fell in this? No, no, you were not. Stri okay, strike the wind from your from your uh, from the record. You don't hear wind. You don't hear creatures. It sounds like a normal door. But we, but you said sand. I did because I was reading something else. I was reading part of the description to see what's happening. Um, so Thongram uh, continues to see, he you know, doesn't see any other cobblestones up along the way. He does still see this pile of, uh, 
of gold coins uh, with the the lucky skull on top of it, with its with its wee little spider friends in its eyeball. Um, All right, Eldon, what do you what do you think? The doors do not appear to be locked, and you do not appear to find any traps in them. Looks like they found a door back there, but I still feel like this is the direction we should be headed. So do I, but I'm also no longer sure this is the actual way towards the entrance. I mean, secret passages always lead out, right? The room we ran downstairs felt way more like an entry than this place does. Secret doors tend to lead to treasure rooms or shortcuts in this place, as we've kind of okay. surmised, I would guess. So, Thongram, your um, your javelin. Um, manages to uh, disturb the pile of uh, gold coins there. Um, and as, as it does that, um, the, 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 the skull kind of falls to the floor as this cloud emits uh, in a 10-foot cube uh, around this, this pile of coins. Um, and you see this small, um, this 10 foot haze of what appears to be like a gash as a uh, gas of spores that have emanate, emanated from, uh, what appears to be yellow mold. Uh, dis disguised as golden coins. Hope you didn't want that javelin, Strongrum. But the bones clatter down. The spider kind of it, you know, it's like what the hell, and kind of skitters away towards the south. Um, you know, it looks like it kind of scurries away and hides from this 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 cloud of stuff and. Um, and the sword hilt just kind of clatters down to the ground. Uh, yeah. Uh, mm. I'm just going to try something, but it's probably overly stupid. My third favorite thing that y'all normally do. We need to get back there. Well, Make sure I think it's just spores. Um, uh, although I am probably immune to the poison, I probably don't want to get spored. Well, it looks like it's not even real gold, so we could probably just leave it alone. Although it does look like there's a hallway down there. I think we should open this door up here because it seems the way to go. All right, hold on. I'm going to hide here and you open the door. I open the door. Okie dokie. Hey, at least open it enough to take a look in. I heard I open, open the door. <laughs> but everything's perceptively. You deftly open the door with perception. <laughs> Close the damn reveal, damn it. I'm having roll 20 issues, I'm sorry. <sighs> okay. So... You open this up to see a fairly large chamber. There's more to that. Um, 
So in this chamber, do 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 do. You see a room that is decorated with a bizarre diorama depicting the land of the dead. Small, brightly painted clay statues have been placed about the room to represent the inhabitants of this realm and the unfortunate people they have taken into their care. In the center of the room, the floor rises to form a small hill. A group of small figures seem to be struggling to roll a boulder up the hill, while a devil drives them on. Above the hill, in the ceiling, is a glowing spot that illuminates the entire chamber with an eerie silver light. A cobblestone path leads from the western door to the foot of the hill. A similar path runs eastward and then veers south. Sections of the diorama around the perimeter of the room depict different environments in the land of the dead. In the western end of the room is a region of burning sands. There, there, devils torture those who have been unfortunate enough to fall into their hands. Along the southern side is a grassy plain where people frolic and hunt antelope and deer. North of the grassy plain and south of the hill, the floor opens into a model of a canyon. A river of lava flows down into it where, while flames lick the walls. East of the hill, in a side area of the room, is a counterpart to this fiery canyon, an icy waste. To the north of the hill is a putrid, bubbling marsh where figures strive to keep their heads above the surface. From out of the marsh, a black, torpid river winds its way past the northern edge of the hill and flows west to pour over the lip of a steam-filled chasm in the northwest corner of the room. Within this dark chasm, worms pursue the fleeing forms of naked people. In the south corner of the room, uh, on the eastern wall, is a barred door. Didn't expect that. Aha! Uh -huh. No, you didn't. Nor did I. So you heard sand because I misread it. <laughs> All right, well, I'm at a loss. Uh, we can keep going this way, but since this apparently has some bizarre architecture, I don't know where we're at. Yeah, it kind of blows my sense of direction out. Um, yes, try to try, try to ignore that uh, lapse of physics. <laughs> like I said, that room, that big room, the baboon room, sure seemed like an entryway, and I don't know where we're at now. So I'm not sure we're even going towards the entrance anymore. Exit. And entrance or yeah way out um yeah do we keep going this way do we want to try that secret door of bizarre trigger placement yeah they it's they triggered it by a stone in the floor that almost anybody walking by could step on yeah it seems both bizarre and bad at its job. I'm open to suggestions. I'm going to draw something on here just so you'd have an idea. Um, so it talked about the paths, just in case you were curious. Yeah, that the, the description was kind of, it starts like, Getting a little so something along that line. That's you. You see that there's a clearly delineated path through this diorama. Okay, so there's a path that seems to lead to the door, the bar. Yeah, it talked about a path that led to the foot of the hill and then a path that led to this door to the north uh, to the southeast or eastern corner there. And again, there this entire room is bathed in the silvery light 
that's coming from this uh, chimney-like thing that seems to be right at the top of the, that hill. You know, not, not directly at the top of the hill, but it's, you know, the crest of the hill would be directly underneath where this chimney is or where this, this opening is. Yeah, I'm at a loss as well. Who's in charge of this group? What are we doing here? If we keep going this way, do we stay on the path, or do we think the path is a trap? Or does the path have a weird secret floor, floor trigger that opens up the proper way to go, and we're <laughs> bound to step on it? <laughs> Who knows? Where did Vongram go? can't see him back there. He was just hiding because y'all opened the door. He's a brave one. He jumped into a hallway that just opened by... Right? Mm -hmm. What you find in there, Tongram? He's just standing right here. Uh-oh. All right. So Thongram, opens a door that reveals that nobody else sees. Yes. So Thongram Ash, seeing as that they are correct in that, join me over there in the DM chat room, please. Okay. Okay. So, in this room, um, it's a room full of smoking mirrors. Uh, I could read the entire description to you, but... Uh, looking around the room, you see a red mirror, a black mirror, a white mirror, a blue mirror, and a pool in the middle of the room that is uh, full of a golden liquid. Um, so, uh, it is a room, like I said, a room of smoking mirrors. Uh, you... Okay. I can tell you more about them if you wish, or if you want to go and just tell them what you have seen. Smoke is coming out of them, or they just look cloudy? They look cloudy. Um, yeah, it, it, from from your vantage point, I mean, you you look at each one and go, oh, each one of these does something crazy. Um, so, All right. Uh, yeah. Um, so there, there you go. Um, any questions before we go on? Uh, not at the moment. Okay. We're back. Hey, Siona, that room down there is full of a bunch of weird looking mirrors and some gold juice. Juice. <laughs> Did you drink any of it? No, not yet. Okay. Can you. Uh, do the mirrors reflect the room? No, they're all cloudy-like. And they're different colors, too, which was kind of odd. Maybe we should go tell the others. Hey, Corin, do you think that barred door looks like kind of the way out? That's I mean, it seems, like, seems like that's a question for Raz. I'm a rogue. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> that was my first joke. Door for bards. <laughs> so, 
So, Raz, what you want to do there, buddy? I I don't know. It's like go play some music at it. At this point, I have no idea where out is. Well, I mean, we know where one exit is, so I think we're okay. And that should be the general direction of it. So, do you want to start proceeding up? Just, uh, but with, without without Dongrim and Siona keeping with us, they seem to be distracted by the shiny objects direction. I still just want to get out of here. Yeah, I'm assuming I heard nothing of what on transpire between them. Oh no, I yelled it down the hall. Yelled it. Oh. Just saw what? Oh, everything I told Siona, sorry. I just repeated it just so you guys were filled in. So he's yelling around in the hallway, wake up the whatever um, to our presence. So gold juice and mirrors don't reflect? Really? He didn't say anything about reflecting. He didn't actually go that far. He it's just saw the foggy. thing. Yes. I, I assume foggy meant they weren't really doing their job as mirrors. Reflect poorly. All right. So, should we take a boot on this, or we just, should we just? So again, um, so I would suspect that. Uh, sorry, I'm not, let me say this, and I'll, I'll and, and then you can say what you're going to say. I would suspect that Raz would have at least poked his head into the diorama room uh, to, you know, to satisfy his curiosity. Um, Sounds about right. Yeah. So, um, you know, as he's looking at it, again, uh, you know, his eyes are drawn to the fact that, the, you know, the only source of natural looking light has been in this particular room outside of the hole that was in the floor um, or hole that was in the ba the baboon room. Um, he, his eyes are drawn towards, towards the silvery light. Um, and... Uh, yeah, so I, I would imagine that he would, you know, be willing or be wanting to at least check, you know, look at that a little bit more. That's just my suspicion. All right, well, I will step to, into this room tentatively and look around, making sure it's safe to proceed. Okay. Everything... Oh. Go ahead. We think ways towards an exit, so maybe we can come back later. Come back to this room later? No, no. I'm saying this to Thongrim about the room that he's seeing. Does if it does it look like an exit, or do we think because we think we're we're looking to try and get out of here? I'm I'm kind of with Corin as far as checking out that door across the way to see if we can get out. Okay. All right. Well, since I guess he's in the room and not dead, we're probably okay to go in. So we're uh, perceptively walking along the path. Well, yeah. some of you. So, Raz will get up hang to on. The fork in the road. All, All right. right, hang on. Thongram. Oh, buddy, old pal. I'm gonna gonna ask you a question. Did you move? I there? didn't realize. Did I you... didn't realize there was paths. I forgot about paths. Okay, it's like, did you move there on purpose? <laughs> I forgot there was other stuff on the floor. Sorry. Okay. Then I will let that go. <laughs> But I'm probably going to go over towards the Sisyphus Hill. 
Mississippi Hill. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. I I got that but reference. Remember that I was trying to think of that name. Well, Raz will go up about to about right there and look at the thingy while I Corin goes up there and starts looking at the door. And I'm with Corin to look at doors. Okay, so um, two things. So Raz will need to roll me a perception check, as will Corin. So Corrin's being aided by Elden. With any guidance he should need. Well, I am just suddenly not one of those walls I've rolled last week. And then Raz. Okay. All right, so Corin, um, am I looking at am I looking at a six or an eleven? An eleven. Okay. Um, you know, you're looking at that door, uh, and you see that the the fact that it's got a barred handle on it that seems to be the only thing that's keeping that door shut. Um, other than that, you don't you don't hear anything in the room, uh, and you don't uh, see any any traps. Now, um, Raz, on the other hand, he's looking at this hill, um, and he you know he's taking a look at that, and you know it seems like you know that that. There could be a good path, uh, you know. Looks, he's trying to look at this chimney, you know, from the bottom of the hill, and thinks, you know, that seems weird that the uh, that there's light coming out of that. I bet, I bet I could fit through that. That might be worth checking out. And he relays that to the group, saying, "Hey guys." I, don't you think it's a bit odd that the, out, out, out of everywhere that we've been in this this place, um, that this would be the one thing that's just em, em, emanating emanating light? I mean, that looks like daylight to me. I mean, I could be wrong. I mean, it could be. Um, I, I would not want to be the first person to go poke my head in there, but you are welcome to. Does anybody have a mirror or something? <laughs> Sorry. Well, this door over here looks like it's locked to keep people out, as in an entrance, right? So maybe that's the direction we want to be going. And that light might be also something we could go through the door to find. Like I said, I'm this layout's got me so confused that I'm almost willing to try going up in the light just to get the hell out of here. Okay, so Siona, what do you think? You've been kind of quietly taking in the diorama from the uh, western door there. Um, I'm still wondering about the uh, hidden passage, but I'm not really doing anything other than waiting for them to make a decision. Okay. Well, 
Thongram, what do you think? I mean, I guess while they're checking out the door and Rask, I kind of, you know, relayed what he was looking at. I'll kind of walk up the hill, I guess, towards this thing just to kind of get a better look at it, I guess, since it is the natural light thing. Okay. Is, are we talking chimney as in like a hole going down or a hole going up? It's a hole going up. It's it's it is a hole in the ceiling, like a vent. So I mean, oh, okay. Yeah. So if you're if you're standing on top of where that that black circle is, that's technically the top of the hill, and so you would be looking up, and it's, uh, you know, you get there and you you, um, you know, if somebody was like standing on your shoulders they could reach up and, you know, grab it and try to pull themselves up. You know, it'd be kind of like, you know, moving, shimmying up, you know, you know, like an air vent or something where, you know, you push your feet against the one wall and your back against the other and you could try to, it looks like you could shuffle your way up that way. But you could see, clearly see sky and everything up. You cannot uh, clear it. No, you don't see sky. You see light. How far between, so you said there's probably about 10 feet or so between that chimney and the top of the hill? Uh, yeah, I'd say about that. I'm going to move your character right here. Um, so while we're going through all this, because uh, something else is going to happen too. Uh, but while you're looking up there, we're, we're going to say you're still you're still actively doing something. So I can't see the sun, but I definitely see uh, some light, and we could probably shimmy up it if we were careful. But I really don't know where it's going. This this door is, you know, it's locked here from the inside, keeping people out. Wouldn't that out in? Wouldn't we want to be going that way? Probably not so difficult to get out to go through a pipe. Hey, Thongram, roll me a strength saving throw, please. So, as you're standing there on the top of the hill, you feel as though some sort of magical force is trying to prevent you from standing on top on the very top of this hill. Um, you're able to resist it for now, but the longer you stand there, the more you feel like you're going to be pushed one way or the other down this hill, as though some magical force is trying to prevent you from being in that exact spot. Whoa! You guys feeling that? Like someone's trying to tug up on the insides. Well, you know, this is a diorama of the land of the dead. That It could be keeping you from going to the land of the dead. You know, like a safety mechanism. Might not be sunlight you're looking at. Yeah, it could be death light. You know, that, that, that light in the tunnel when you get hurt real bad? That, that's what you could be looking at right now. Don't go into the light, Congra man. Yeah, you're carrying a bag of holding. So, looking at the dirt... Is it just, can I tell anything about how dirt would have got here or anything? I mean, is there anything special about it? No, I mean, it just, it looks like the hill has been, um, let me see. Because um, this room isn't dirt, right? No, the room isn't dirt. I mean, it's, um, you know, it's, the hell is, 
I'm, I'm reading through it again, I'm sorry. It, no, I mean, it, it shows that the floor has risen up to form a small hill. So it's not necessarily even dirt. It, it's like the floor has been built up to this. Oh, okay. Um. So again, looking at this entire room, obviously, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's trying to show all the people that have been here and what the various devils and things that they are doing to them, the, the different models and everything in the different areas appear to be, you know, in various stages of struggle. Well, I'll follow your lead. If we ain't going through the door, then someone's got to give me a boot. I got tiny legs and little arms. I don't like the way that feeling sounded. I think we should try the door. All right, I right, try the door. Okay, so the door is going to open up to reveal. Well, I don't think this is the way out. Hang on. What is this? Hang on. Storage closet? Beyond the door is a modest-sized room with a lumpy pile of earthy material in the middle of the floor. Across from the door, is a, in the southeast corner, a glazed flask rests on a small shelf. In the northwest and northeast corners are two more shelves on which rest a small urn and a thin stone cylinder. Nope, let's close it and rebar it. All right, it's, closing it and rebarring it. It's, That's a, the, it's a lock to keep something in there. That's where the vampires sleep. <laughs> Seal that right back up again. It's a big old nope. <laughs> uh, it could just be a storage closet. <laughs> you don't lock things into a storage closet. <laughs> You're back away, not today. You're Maybe locked. you're trying to bar people from getting into it with a very poorly conceived locking mechanism. <laughs> no. I mean, granted, the architecture of this place was terrible at his job. I wouldn't put it past them, but... <laughs> nope, nope, and nope. <laughs> so let's stop and think here for a minute, and let's ask the question... What would Raziel Deltanian do in this particular instance? He would not go into the room full nope. of vampire stuff. He'd be saying, he'd be singing, nope, nope, but nope. Yeah, but he'd would he look at, at me the... saying, get that guy, and he'd be backing away slowly. Or would he be willing to trust Thongram to toss his ass up into the chimney? Uh, probably not. He is dumb. But he's wider. He's wiser than that. <laughs> hey, see, come, come, give me a shove. I mean, didn't you have a bad feeling up up there? Like a push? You got pushed back or something? No, I mean, it's just really hard to stand here. I think, you know, it's sort of like you're at the tip of the world and you're trying not to be there, sort of. But, you know, that's going to be your problem once I go up in the chimney. I mean, if, if that's what you want. Doesn't sound safe to me. We're looking... Well, I don't know. I mean, there's that hallway at the bottom with the spores. Or there's, we could go back to the bab and try and get our way to where the baboons are to get out of here. I mean, for all we know, that room that with that skip of a beholder in it's where the actual exit is. And a one, and a two. Siona, are you on board with this? Are you going to help him? 
I just don't think. Can you see anything up the the chimney before? Like anything just more clearly light. than just light? Uh, I don't know. I'll look again. You do see light. You see what, a, you know, again, it appears to be a, a tunnel in which you could fit and you are comfortable in dark tunnels because, you know, being a dwarf and everything and working in stone. It could kind we of, all fit through it? I mean, it's, yeah. The dwarfs are usually stockier than the rest of us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you see anything that looks like it's not just a light? Do you see sky or do you just see a bright light? He does not see sky. I don't know when I get up to the top. I'll tell you what I see. What if we just let Sionam do that pass wall thing again up to the ceiling? No. We don't, don't like being helpful, but we got to be close to the surface. I mean, to use your previous words, there could be a whole nother level. I was almost to the surface in the floor below us. It could have just been a giant room full of baboons. This is true. I didn't get a chance to look into it, but it did seem like it had light like it was outside. All right, if you want to push the long let's just go ahead and let that fail so we can move on. Or maybe we'll get out of here. Okay. Okay. So, you get up there, you do that. Siona is on top of the hill. Thongram, you are able to catch yourself on, on the, uh, on, into the, uh, in there and kind of scurry up at least you're holding on inside of this chimney as soon as you let go from siona siona roll me a strength saving throw please so as as thongram jumps up and grabs on and kind of gets onto this spider wall type thing and he's hanging up there you get this you get this feeling that, you know, that as Thongram described it, as something's trying to push you off of this. And uh, roll me a 1d4, please. Uh, helps if I... <laughs> yes, Actually. that is, that is what I said. <laughs> Okay, so you get knocked down. Um, you were standing here right underneath the hole. So you're going to get knocked down five feet and knocked prone on this side of the hill. You don't take any damage, but you notice, you know, as, the, as you stand up there, that something's really fighting to keep you away from standing on top of that hill. Thongram has found himself and he is sitting there uh, in this uh, in this chute. It is uh, some cramped quarters and you are spending your time um, you know you, you know trying to steady yourself into this. Um, if you would um, now that you're go ahead sorry. Okay, uh, now that you're in the tunnel and you've moved up a little bit, can you roll me a perception check, please? Okay. All right, so as you're up there, you notice... Um, that it appears that this chute leads up to uh, to an open uh, an open area, um, 
you, when, you, this this silvery light appears uh, to be coming from this you know this graded uh, well like area at the top. Um, Howsomever, um, as you're climbing up to it, your hands um, kind of they kind of get loose into this unexpected area, and uh, this giant spider um, reaches out and and grabs you, or it reaches out to try to attack you, and from its secret uh, its little lair here in this area. Um, before you were attacked, though, before you were attacked, though, you did you did get a sense that there was a, a grate at the top of this chute that looks like, you know, like you might be at the bottom of a well or something, that, or like this well leads to this area. So, as you're doing that, like I said, a spider reaches out from its little hidey hole there and attempts to bite you. Missed. All right. So, you're sitting there in this this area, and this you know the, you, you're you're facing a spider. Um, what are you gonna do? knowing that you're kind of in cramped quarters. Is that how spiders work? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how Spider-Man gets around. Yeah. I don't think you can up what it's going to shoot out. <laughs> okay, so roll me a strength check first. <laughs> Athletics, I suppose. All right, so we're going to say... All right, he's going to try to get out of this, so he's just going to roll himself. He rolled himself a straight strength check to try to avoid this. So you have grabbed this spider in this little hole, and you are attempting to squeeze the, the literal, literal shit out of him. <laughs> so, so as you've got him grappled, go ahead and roll me another strength check, and let's let's just see what happens. I roll a straight strength check. Look on strength. Yeah. Not on the strength saving throw. Well, no, I mean, shit. Would it be athletics? I can click the saving throw. I just no, can't click the strength itself. No, no. Just uh, click athletics. I'm sorry. I keep it calling for the wrong thing. Call and just go for athletics. Okay, so you're sitting there and you're, I mean, you're just squeezing and, you know, and all this stuff. And I'm not going to say that, uh, that, uh, that silk comes out of it, but let's say that you do a D10 worth of damage to this guy, and you're crushing its thorax. All right, well, there so, we go. So roll me a 1D10 bludgeoning damage. All right, so this thing has taken four four points of damage, and Siona would have heard this screaming something about a spider. And let's go into uh, initiative right quick.
I'm just going to put a token on there that represents this guy. Okay, so Raziel's up, and he's also heard uh, Thongram yell down from this tube something about a something about a spider. Hey Thongram, what's going on up there? Raz ends his turn because he can't do anything. Okay. Maybe he would ready something. No, he's just, he's done. Elden, you are up. Siona is on deck. Okay. What's going on back there? Move on up here. Just ready a sacred flame for anything hostile that comes in life. Okay. Because I can't see anything, right? No, no. Thongram is currently up in a tunnel. All you've heard is something. So y'all are looking up in the ceiling. You know, uh, Siona is laying down on the floor, you know, just to the side of the top of the hill there. And y'all are, you, all you do is you hear Thongram is, Shoot, web, you stupid spider. Because that's what he sounds like. Yeah, then I'll just, yeah, standing there, I'll ready for any okay hostile that comes out of the pipe I'll... got it siona you are up can i see anything you can look up there and you could um you you would see a little bit of a struggle there yeah i'd say can you handle it are you good do you want to throw it at me? Thongram, what's going on? Uh, I'm trying to make this spider shoot a web. But are you but okay? But he's being stubborn. Uh, I don't think he... Unless he's got some buddies, I ought to be alright. You didn't I'm just going to get up from prone and like be ready. I'll just be ready. I don't know. Okay. I'll drop him down and you hit him. All right. Already in action, then. <laughs> uh, all right. So the giant spider is currently within his grasp, and he's going to try to break free from this, and that would be, a, I would assume, it'd be a straight strength check for him. It's athletics or acrobatics, whichever he chooses. That would be a 14 versus... Thongram's athletics. Yes, Thongram, you need to roll me another athletics check, please. So that spider is... He's stuck. He ain't going anywhere. So he's going to turn around and he's going to try to just, you know, bite. Bite him again. As such... He manages, in all the confusion and in this tight space, he ends up successfully kind of biting his own, one of his own legs a little bit. Um, so, you know, Thongram deftly kind of went, nope, and shoved his, uh, one of his legs into the mandibles and he, as he crunched down. And we're going to say that it takes um, half of this damage. So it's going to take two damage. So Thongram, you are up, and Corin's on deck. I'll uh, just. You're going to throw him down there. Yep. All right. So, I suppose that's 
what athletics you're gonna you're trying to toss him down with with force so uh i guess so i mean i just kind of tossing him down to siona who's kind of i guess sitting down there like a batter waiting to hit something as it falls out of the hole all right so yeah we're only at the athletics check Okay, so you, you instead of just dropping him, you're at least attempting to throw him down with a little bit of force. So you, you fling him down this, and we we're saying you were about halfway up there. Uh, so as it's going down, it's trying to skitter and save itself from falling all the way through this, um, through this, uh, the, this pit. And we're going to say, based on that, it's going to be a... DC, let's call it 16. Oh man, as it comes down, it falls through and it's managing to save itself and it, you know, skitters and it grabs onto the bottom of this, this chimney. Howsoever, its body is still kind of trailing just outside of, you know, where it can see it. So it's outside of Siona's reach, but Elden is paying attention for it. So, so Elden would be able to unleash his sacred flame at the tail end of this thing. All right. So it's attempting as it does this. It's wiggling back and forth, and it's going to do another dexterity save. So it's managing to take no damage no damage no damage but as it's sitting you know you see this it, it is skittering you know it obviously it's you know it feels this blast right next to it and it's still scrabbling to try to get up there uh corin did you ready an action i haven't had a turn yet okay so you rash have... is in rash is in his turn okay so right, he didn't do anything all right so do I get a movement action? Yeah. Yeah, you absolutely do. I I uh I let go. You let go? Yep, I'm clearing the tunnel. Okay. Cannonball. <laughs> okay, I love it. All right. So, you cannonball through and once again, another dexterity save from actually would it be a strength save if it's holding on to it? This is no, I'm gonna say dex save. What it if he's holding on to it, you're coming down. No, there ain't no way he's there's no way he's holding on to that because you're plummeting down. You're a heavy guy, it's gonna hit there. His claws are gonna break loose from this. You fall down, you know, 15, 20 feet. What is the damage on falling? 1d6 per 20 feet? 1d10, or, yeah, you're right, 1d6 1D per 10 feet. Okay, 1d6 per, all right, so we're going to say it's 20 feet. You're falling on top of him, so we're going to say Thongram suffers half damage of 2, 2d6. And this spider is going to fall, and it's going to take, um, I'm going to say it's 1d6, but one and a half times of that because you're landing on top of him. So it's going to take four damage. Then I'll probably roll out. I guess over here somewhere. Yeah, yeah, about five feet there. So this guy is now here on that. Which now puts him <laughs> in range of Siona, whose uh, ready to action would go off. Okay. This is all happening on Thongram's turn. That is a hit. Oh, he says I only get one, so 15. Well, 
which is as you as which is pretty much more than enough to uh, dispatch this. So what? How do you take care of this? I mean, I just want to over the head swing, and then after I've chopped it in half, I want to stomp on it, make sure its head's all good and good, smushed. Good and smushed. All right. So, at the end of Thongram's turn, he has dove down, <laughs> barreled back down this ch- chute, landed on top of the spider, causing it even more damage. Has all of this is happening, and Siona just chops this thing to mush. So that was uh, that was a uh, an exciting, you know, half minute of of action there. Uh, Thongram, would you like to tell us what happened? Uh, what, what you saw up there? Guys, so we might be looking at a well, but it might be infested with spiders. Well, I believe spiders go on the nope category. But I did squish one, uh, but I got close, and there's a grate. So if, I, if someone got back up, we could maybe tie a rope to it and get up there. But I didn't get close enough to see if we could move it. One thing that you, you, I don't know if you heard it, when you were up there, you didn't see any other spiders while you were there. Um, so that appears to have been the only one that you, that you found. But it might be infected with spiders. You are correct. It might be. Spiders. Everywhere, but uh, so if if anybody wants to go back up, we might be able to move a grate and get out. Then that would be just great. Ah, I see what you did there. Siona, I'm sorry I dropped a spider on you. I mean, it was better than the one you let creep up on me last night. At least I was prepared. Baby steps. So what are y'all going to do? You're going to give it another go? I'm gonna give uh, or go ahead. Sorry. You say it looks like a well. You're saying, Vongram? Maybe. So that it's a tunnel. It goes up, and at the top of the thing is a grate. So if it is a well, it's a well that's sealed, or it could be like a sewer, or maybe um, a really tall chimney with a grade on how much further did you have to go uh, I think I was about halfway so like 40 feet up or so that sounds about right maybe well, I could I could scamper up and look again and take some rope with me this time well, or we can just do the movable rod thing again, and I can go 30 feet up and may trend it all the way up. Climb us out of here. All right, so I go up there, may chan 30 feet, click the rod, climb it, get on the rod, may chan the rope over the grate, and then climb up to the top of the grate. Okay. So, you are up there, and you do see that it's, it appears to be a, um, you know, like I said, a, a pewter-looking grate. Um, it's going to take a little bit of strength to try to move it, so uh, roll me an athletics check. You were able to push it, but nothing really happened. 
Can I see anything, like actual outside? You don't see outside, but you're looking through. You can kind of press your face up to see this. So you would be looking out of this. You know, you kind of get the sense, you know, you're kind of, if you smush your face up to it, you see another room that has a, you know, another, you know, you see another room, basically. Um, hang on just a second. Let me see what else you would. Um, it, it is a... Uh, You know, this room is, is continued to be bathed, bathed in, in light. Uh, you don't see out, outside, but, you know, from what you can tell, it is a smaller room. All right, well, I'm going to move the rod to be just enough to where Thongrim could stand and push on the grate, and then I'm going to slide down the rope. Thongrim, why don't you get, that, get up there and see if you can give that a, a, a push. All right, so Thongram is able to take this grate and just kind of punk, fling it off with uh, with, with uh, no issue. And so he pokes his head up and um, sees. All right, so. All right, so in this room, uh, it's a small and plainly decorated room. On the north and south sides are fountains made of bronze inlaid marble. The southern one is cracked and only, a, and only dry, limey deposits remain in it. The northern one contains about two feet of dark water, fed by a trickle that falls from the top of the fountain. In the water, the white, gauzy form of, of a crayfish lies in a bed on a line in crustaceans. To the west, stairs lead up out of the room, and to either side of the stairs along the west wall are narrow, dust-covered ledges. I think we can get up. I don't know. There's another set of stairs and some wells. I'll drop a rope down. I, so I guess I'll... I thought there was already a rope hanging. I thought that's how you climbed it was, up there. It was, on the, it was on the grate. If we climb that, it'll pull the grate closed. Ah. So I'll, I'll uh, reach down and pull the rod up to some reasonable height over the hole and drop a rope down that people can get up. And assist them as they come up the hole. Okay. Wait for me. Come on, Eldon. Because the baboons are coming. <laughs> so I pack, pack my rope back up, put the rod back in my belt. So the uh, crayfish uh, does not return the wave. Um, it is nothing but the shell of a long expired resident of the fountain. Vongram, roll me a perception check, please. Vongram. Oh, I got a good one! Yeah, you did. Thongram, you notice something shiny um, underneath the uh, the shell um, of that uh, of that crayfish, and um, is that something you want to reach down and pick up? It looks. I mean, I shouldn't, but I don't even think it would be a question 
I would have probably just did it before I thought. I'm pretty confident Thongram would have just reached him. What's this? Um, Ooh, shiny. Ha ha, I can use this in one of my next projects. You pull out a platinum key and chain. Thongram found a key. Hey, look, I got a key that this crayfish stole. Uh, who's responsible for keys? I'll give it to Corin because he is normally in the front where there would be doors. Sorry, I was having some Discord problems. I take the key and I also put that on my belt. All right. And for for what it's worth, um, the crayfish was over here. Yeah. I thought I said that was nothing but limestone, and the crayfish was uh, in a pool full of crustaceans. Oh. Oh. Yes. Yes. So it is. I mean, that's how I heard. Yes, I think you are correct. The northern, the southern one, this would be the southern one because of the way this crazy map works, uh, is cracked and only dry, limey deposits remain in it. The northern one contains. The northern one, which would be this one, is the one that has a bit of dark water. No. The one with blue, the blue one has water in it, and the other one does. But, yes. Yeah, yeah, I'll do it how you want to do it. I mean, that's, that's way too wise for you. Yes. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> I'm just going, I'm, look, we've been working on this stupid map now for like two months, and every other way, north has been to the left. Why in God's green earth would north be to the right this time? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I didn't even—I didn't even know this direction. I just looked at colors. So. Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm now realizing this map has some crazy, weird things to it. All right. So anyway, yes, we're gonna go with what the book says. The book says that this one is the dry one, and this one is the wet one. Wait, which way is north? North. North is to the You're left. Like, like north, the other direction now. Yeah. No. North is no. North is to the left. I, I'm, I relish the day that we have a map where north is up. <laughs> well, uh, if, it, if north was to, this, to the other direction, that would explain a few things about how the map would you know, map of downstairs. Uh, yes, that, that, is, that is correct. Um, I'm, just, I'm just rolling with it, man. This is what I got. <laughs> Okay, so the other one, the other fountain is the one that has water in it. Uh, the dry one is the one that had the crayfish shell in it. Either way, and to the west is where the stairs lead up. It's like which we, is, gotta, we gotta go up those stairs and get out of here. Yes. So, Siona, you're at the base of the stairs. Well, what is it that you want to do? Look up them. And now this is gonna be. This is gonna come as a shock to you, but you see a bronze door. And those kind are never locked or trapped, right? Never. Been so far. I run up the stairs to the door. Do you open the door? He said, "Yes, I know you're. Just, I do. You're just gonna open the door. That's what I'm you gonna do. Open the door. You're gonna open the door because you like opening the door. You like to live dangerously because you like opening doors. You're learning from the school of Thongram. So you open the door, revealing 
yet another room. So, killing bees. Bees! Bullets will do nothing. Um, so, in this room, I'm going to read the description to you, and then we're going to talk about the time. In the middle of this chamber is what appears to be the withered, preserved form of a centaur mounted on a slab of marble. Tinted green and decked out in lacquered leather, feathers, and copper wire jewelry, he faces the western entrance to this chamber. The centaur holds a bronze-hafted pike tipped with a broad blue-gray flame-shaped spearhead. Scattered around the room are jewelry and knickknacks made of beaten copper, cut and polished obsidian, shells, quartz, and coral. Much of this treasure is at the feet of the centaur, symbolically being trod underfoot. Two tall urns, shaped like wicker baskets, stand along the northern wall, each one filled with river stones. So, it's 920 Central. We normally, around this time, have a time check. How you guys doing? I would say we should keep going, but this dungeon never ends, so we should probably call it. Trust me, it does end. Anybody else? We should probably end. Okay. Okay. Either way, I mean, I got probably 15, 20 minutes, but if it seems like that might take longer than that, we may want to call. But we'll probably end up talking for 10, 15 minutes like we always do. It took 15 minutes to kill a spider in a pipe. Yep. Hey, but It y'all's... only took five seconds. God. Y'all's battles have gotten faster, by the way. Okay, so um, what do you want to do? I guess we say, I said we call it. We got to a good spot. We got we got up a well. We got level six. We're we're at a good spot. You're not level six. Not yet. But soon. Damn it. I mean, to me, it looks like there's another vampire in here, so she probably just call it. How, how did you get? How did you get vampire out of centaur? Well, the vampire that... centaur. Or river stone. Every time I see like a tomb-shaped plinth thing, I guess I'm just gonna think there's a vampire in it. Plus, we found his closet downstairs. Yeah, we found <laughs> a vampire closet. And these dreaded vampiric river stones and these urns here. Mm-hmm. Yes. Maybe it's an Egyptian vampire. So you got Egyptian out of all of this? I don't know. <laughs> I've really done a piss poor job of describing things if you've got an Egyptian. Roman. <laughs> it's getting more like African. Countryman, uh, lend me my ears. Jaguar and stuff. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, all right. Well, if y'all don't want to explore this room or do anything, we will we will call it. Um, and let me let me just double check here. Yeah. To to Will's point, this dungeon will end, and it will end next session. <laughs> Promises, but, promises. But, but not next week. But not next week. Okay. I, I, all right. To your point. Promises, promises. Unless y'all do something really stupid, this d- Have you this not will. Seen us? Yeah. Well, that is true. <laughs> uh, it will end next week. I uh, next session, uh, <laughs> uh, which will give us plenty of time for Lindsay to look through the email that I sent her and give me some thoughts on that. Uh, it'll give Gabe plenty of time to look through the email that I sent him. It may give me an opportunity to think of an email to send to to Will, Ash, and or, uh, you know, the other guy that sometimes plays with us. And 
we will go from there. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to revealing this entire thing to y'all, if y'all are really curious, by the way, uh, <laughs> when this is all done. Um, I'm curious, for sure. Um, so, yeah, this was good. I, I had fun. I, you know, um, yeah, I, I thought this I, was good. I can't imagine where we'd be at if we went in every room and tried to solve every puzzle and went through every door. We'd be, on the, we'd be like in the second room. We'd be dead. You well, would be that too. you would be dead <laughs> because we had no we, we were barely on fumes just you know starting this 